Hello and welcome to Chapter 10, Medication Administration. This is Keith Woodmeyer with Wayne County EMS. Alright, let's get started out with Drug Administration. An EMT can give or assist a patient in taking medications only by the order of a licensed physician. Well, we need to remember we've got two different types of orders. We have online and on offline medical control, both of which are acceptable. Before giving any drug, you must assess the patient. The extent of the physical examination you perform will depend on the patient's illness or present condition. The physical exam provides baseline information by which you will be able to evaluate the effectiveness of the medication given. Obtaining a medica uh, medication history from the patient, including the following, prescribed medications, over-the-counter medications, and allergies to any medications. You must be knowledgeable about how each drug you, you give. I'm sorry. You must be knowledgeable about each drug you give, including the following. The um, this is the whole drug profile, which we've already gone over in the last PowerPoint slide. Before giving each medication, consult with medical direction uh, as appropriate. In uh, Kentucky, we have some protocols that are pretty liberal about what needs to be consulted. And that really depends on your medical director. When speaking with the medical director, um, be sure to relay relevant information about the patient, including the following, uh, their age, chief complaint, vital signs, allergies, current medications, and pertinent past medical history. The physician's orders will include the name, dose, and route of the drug to be given. Make sure you are you clearly understand the orders received from the medical direction. Repeat the orders back by, to the physician, including the name of the drug, dose, and route of administration. If an order received from the medical direction is unclear or seems incorrect, ask the physician to repeat the order. However, um, you, that only goes so far. You really need to make sure that um, it's within your scope of practice. If a physician tells you to do something, even if it's not in your scope of practice, you know, if it's, especially if it's not in your scope of practice, you should not do it. Now we're going to review the six rights of drug administration. The six rights included the right patient, right medication, right dose, right route, right time, and right documentation. Different routes of drug administration. We have um, the enteral route and the, par the parenteral route. Um, the enteral routes of drug administration, one of them include the oral route. This requires a responsive patient who is cooperative. Um, let's see here. Commonly used oral dosages form, uh, forms include liquids, tablets, and capsules. Aspirin and activated charcoal may be given this route. Um, the advantages is um, the patient gets to do, you know, gets to control what occurs. Some of the disadvantages include the, that the patient has to be responsive and cooperative in order to receive it.
Giving oral medications usually does involve exposure to the patient's blood or other bodily fluids. I'm sorry, um, does not include exposure to the patient's blood or other bodily fluids. However, wearing appropriate PPE, uh, again, you know, as I said, they, the book uses the term PPE, I prefer the term BSI. Um, it's common practice to minimize the chances of communicable disease exposure. The inside of the medicine container, its contents, and the inside of the container's caps are considered clean. When giving medication, be careful not to touch these areas. When administering a tablet, open the container, pour the correct number into the inside cap of the container, transfer the tablets by pouring them into the patient's hand, making sure not to contaminate the inside of the container, and then carefully recap the container. Next we have buccal. The um, buccal means pertaining to the cheek. To give a drug by this route, a drug is placed by in the mouth against the mucous membranes of the cheek until the drug is dissolved. The drug may act locally on the mucous membranes of the s mouth or systemically when swallowed, by in, when swallowed in the saliva. Oral glucose is given by this route. Next we have some sublingual. Sublingual drugs are given under the tongue. The drug must remain under the tongue until it's dissolved and absorbed. The drug is absorbed rapidly into the bloodstream due to the rich blood supply under the tongue. The patient should not swallow the drug or take it with water. If swallowed, the drug may be in, inactivated by gastric juices in the stomach. Nitroglycerin may be given this route. Next we have the inhalation route. Drugs given by inhalation route have a rapid onset of action due to the large surface area and blood supply of the lungs. To make sure the normal gas exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide is continued in the lungs, drugs given by inhalation must be in the form of a gas, such as oxygen, or a fine mist, such as an aerosol. Oxygen is given for its systemic effects. A meter dose inhaler such as albuterol is given for localized effects on drugs. Drugs given by the subcutaneous route are given by means of needle inserted underneath the skin into the subcutaneous tissue. The onset of action of subcutaneous is faster than that of oral route, but slower than the intramuscular route. Absorption is delayed in circulatory collapse, such as shock. Only a small volume of drug can be given by this route. When the drug is given by the IM route, a medication in liquid form is injected into a large mass of skeletal muscle. Sites commonly used for pre-hospital care include the arm, which is the deltoid, mid-lateral thigh, the vastus lateralis muscle. The injection is usually made with a longer needle than that with a sub-Q injection. Large volume can be given by the IM route. Then Larger volume can be given IM rather than sub-Q. The onset of action is faster than sub-Q route due to the muscle's blood supply and large absorbing surface. Epinephrine is an example of a drug that can be given by this route. After giving a drug, document the reason the drug was given, the medication administered, and the time you gave it. Reassess the patient and document the patient's vital signs in response to the drugs. Monitor the patient for possible adverse effects as well as the expected results.